So one way to find that leading coefficient in any polynomial function, or actually any function for that matter, um, is think about the parent parent function. So here I've got in this uh, this dotted line is x squared, okay, and it's centered at the origin. And when I come over for x squared, and if you think about it, if I come over one, one squared is one. So yeah, I see how that cross that's right there is one. And if I go over two, and two squared is four. And you see how one, two, three, four. And I know I have it dotted, so I know it's not quite there. But you see how that works? So well, I think, I think aloud, I think over one, up one, over two, up four. For this red graph that I did, I'm seeing I'm going over one, up two. I'm going over two, and it's up eight. So that has a vertical stretch of two. So that's the A. Okay. Now. If I wanted to find it algebraically, I know when x equals 1, y equals 2 for that red graph. That's the stretch graph. So since I have y equals ax squared, I want to find out what a is. y is 2. ax is 1. So 2 equals a times 1. So a is 2. So let's see the same math. So either do it graphically or, or analytically. In chapter 3, we'll want to do it analytically because analytically because the functions are getting a little messier. So this question we asked about, I see it's I see it's I see it's opening down, so I know it's gonna be a negative. I see that it is a parabola, so the shift is left one up two, so I know that's gonna be x plus one up to and that of course gets squared. Now I gotta figure out the A number. Well I see I go over one, I go down one. I go over two, I'm going down four. So that tells me A is just one. And it just happens to be negative because it's opening down. Okay, now if you want to do it a different way, I see when X equals zero, Y equals one. So if I have A times x plus 1 squared plus 2, I'm going to replace, I'm going to replace x, and that's equal to y, I'm going to replace 1 with y for y with 1, I don't know what a is, and I'm going to replace x with 0, so then I'm going to do some order of operation stuff, so 1 equals a times, well, 1 squared is 1 plus 2, so I'm going to subtract 2, subtract 2. I get a equals negative 1. And notice that's exactly the same I got analytically. Okay. Okay, so with this graph, of, this is, I've tried this three times. I keep messing it up because of the scale. So let's see if I can get it right this time. So I see this black dotted graph is negative x squared. I see... When I go over 1, it goes, I'm at, I'm at 1. You see how that's negative 1? I go over 2, I'm down at negative 4. So that tells me this graph uh, has an A of negative 1. Um, so what about something like this with shifted up? Well, let's see. So I see, I see some function x squared plus 1. Now I'm just going to decide on the, the a term. Well, if I go if I go over one, I'm like uh, down a half. So maybe because of the scale, I can see that it's negative one half. But it might be easier to think about it. Hey, I'm going over two. Well, if I go over two, it's supposed to be going down to four, but it's not. It's only going down here to negative one. So it's it's growing half as fast as before. So I'm pretty sure it's going to be negative one-half x squared plus one. Let's do it with the a trick. So I know y equals ax squared plus one. I have this point here, so negative one equals a times two squared plus one. So negative one equals a times four plus one. We'll subtract one. That gives me negative two times 4a, and I'll divide by 4, divide by 4. a has to be negative 2 over 4, negative 1 half, and that's what we got looking at the graph. Okay, so that's how you do a, find the a algebraically. It's a good skill to know how to do, especially come um, section 3.3. Okay, so hopefully this helps answer your questions.